Two weeks ago, I promised that I would make the Steam Deck my daily driver computer. And I've kept that promise. But I never said anything about the operating system. The Steam Deck is an amazing device. In the last couple of weeks, not only have I not missed my computer, I actually think I use this device more than I ever used my computer before. Unfortunately, that means I found the outer limits of SteamOS much faster than I thought I would. I actually did try to use Linux as my operating system back in 2021 when Linus Tech Tips was doing the same thing. Unfortunately, Adobe didn't work, media playback was spotty, Footage ingesting was hard, and gaming was nearly impossible. And as always, troubleshooting was frustrating at the best of times. There really are some things that Windows just does better than Linux when it comes to daily driving. To say the Steam Deck made some impressive strides when it comes to gaming on Linux would be the understatement of the year. But gaming isn't everything that I do. I also edit video, photos, and play indie games, which might not have native Linux support. And while Wine and Proton are certainly options for that use case, I would rather just play them on Windows. However, I know that the GPU drivers on Windows aren't great, so I want to also have SteamOS installed. Sounds like a job for dual booting to me, but that hasn't been added to the deck yet. However, the process of installing Windows to an SD card is actually surprisingly simple. First things first, we need to know what version of Windows we're installing exactly. Steam has officially released an FTPM BIOS update for the deck, and with all the optimizations that Windows 11 made for touchscreen users, I think that's the way to go. Unfortunately, the Steam Deck doesn't support the tool we're going to use for this, so you'll have to go to the library or borrow a friend's Windows machine if you don't have one yourself. Once you have that, go to Microsoft's website and download an ISO for Windows 11. Then, download the USB imaging tool, Rufus. Next, grab the SD card you want to use for this, and be aware that this process will mean that you can't use the upgradable storage on the Steam Deck, since you're filling that slot with an operating system instead. Obviously, you can just pull out this SD card and add one for games instead when you're booting to SteamOS, just make sure you don't lose your Windows drive. Anyway, plug the SD card into your Windows computer and open Rufus. Select the SD card as the drive and select the Windows 11 ISO you downloaded. Change the installation version to Windows to Go. This will install Windows directly onto your SD card. The process will take some time, but after about 30 minutes, you will have a fully functional Windows install on your SD card. Now you can slot the SD card into the deck. Next, we'll need to boot into Windows, but the deck will still only want to boot to its main SSD. In order to get to the boot options screen, all you have to do is hold down the volume down button and power the deck on. Keep the volume button held until you see a screen with boot options in front of you. Use the D-pad to select the SD card and press A. The Steam Deck will restart and load into Windows. There are a few quirks to the setup process, mainly that it's sideways. However, you can reorient the screen once you're through. You may need an external keyboard for the setup as well, but the on-screen keyboard appeared automatically for me. Now you need the official drivers from Steam. I'll have those linked below, and you need to download the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPU drivers. Valve has decent instructions for how to install these, but it's all as simple as clicking Install after you unzip the folders. The last thing you should do is go into the taskbar settings and enable the button to bring up the on-screen keyboard at will. The keyboard for Windows 11 is surprisingly useful, and if you ever find yourself using this device in handheld mode, it'll come in handy. However, I don't think anyone should use it in handheld mode. See, there are some quality of life features noticeably absent from the DeX Windows experience, namely audio. I'm sure a fix for this is coming eventually, but for right now, you're stuck with USB or Bluetooth only if you want to get sound out of this device. But I think that's fine, because like I said, you probably shouldn't use this in handheld mode, and with a USB-C dock, the desktop experience is quite well-rounded. I'm using this Dell WD-19, and it works a treat. USB audio to my mixing board is actually better on Windows than it was on Linux. 
My keyboard connects over Bluetooth just fine, and my mouse has a dongle that I can just plug into the USB port. It's really a surprisingly clean solution. But that's all the setup. What's it like to actually use Windows 11 on the deck? In a word, easy. As an operating system, Windows is so good at getting out of my way that I think it might be the definitive desktop experience for a lot of users. And hey, I even get to have Opera back. Adobe installs in just a few clicks, and software tools for my keyboard and mouse have full support, no troubleshooting needed. There are lots of programs that I found myself missing on the deck, such as my Wii ISO Manager, 7-Zip, which I couldn't get working at all, and even simple stuff, like a more recognizable file system. Premiere performance was admirable, with my Oculus Roundup video taking about an hour to encode at 4K 30fps, and timeline performance was great. Most of my videos are only 1080p as well, so I have no complaints about that. Unfortunately, none of the Adobe products support hardware encoding for the deck, since the APU's drivers haven't been designed with this use case in mind. I even went to AMD's website and downloaded the Adrenaline software utility there, but while the program did claim to have updated my drivers, I saw no noticeable change. One pain point for me is the speed of the SD card. I will say that it's a lot better than I thought it would be, and as far as general computing goes, I completely forgot that this OS was running on an SD card at all. However, especially when installing updates, you will be expecting 10 to 30 minutes of slow moving progress bars most of the time. It does seem like Valve made some optimizations to SD card performance on the deck, but I'm not sure if those are transferable to Windows performance or not. At the end of the day, Windows on the Steam Deck is still experimental. One hilarious artifact of this fringe use case is that the time is always wrong. I don't really understand why, but the hour portion of the time is always set incorrectly, whether I set it manually or it's able to be set automatically. Even the time zone doesn't help. Still, it's amazing to me that Windows on the Deck is not just possible, but highly usable. I lauded the Steam Deck in my last video because it gives you the choice to use it the way that you want to, and that is even more true now. Windows 11 is the de facto desktop experience for a lot of people, and it is a great experience on the deck. I haven't seen a single blue screen or crash or graphical glitch in my time using it, and I haven't exactly been gentle. Again, this is just the beginning of my coverage of the deck, and I haven't even begun to talk about the gaming experience. Get subscribed so you won't miss it, and thanks for watching.